Joy Gray, the host of the Bad Faith podcast, did an episode of Call In, which is like a app where you can do like an interactive show with the audience. They call in, they're on a list, the host can pick people and have a conversation with them. So they were having, she was having a conversation with uh, somebody in her audience about supporting candidates in the Democratic Party. And Brianna had a couple bad takes. Um, and not just on this topic, on a, on a few other topics that I talk about at another time. But in this specific clip that I'm going to show you, they were talking about, she basically tried to equate the efforts of trying to elect somebody in the Democratic Party and trying to elect somebody in a third party as if it's both of them have an equal chance of, you know, electing a politician who's actually going to do anything. Um, And again, my position is, again, electoral politics isn't going to solve any major problems. There needs to be pressure from regular people onto politicians to make them actually do their job. But aside from that, it's been proven that that over and over again, and I almost can't believe that I still have to come out here and make the case that when you put your energy and your time and your resources into trying to elect a Democrat, if they haven't made that decision from the beginning, eventually them being part of that corrupt corporate machine, they're going to be a par- become part of the same establishment that they claim to be fighting against. And then they'll do absolutely nothing to advance the policies that they ran on and raised a bunch of money on. That is what happens every single time. Like I said in the last video, it's not one time. It wasn't a handful of times. It wasn't uh, half the time. It wasn't 80% of the time. Literally every single time we've run this experiment with all the Justice Democrats, all the money that we've put into to trying to elect Bernie Sanders and all that bullshit. It's a, a proven fact at this point that you cannot run somebody in the Democratic Party and expect them to change the party apparatus. The party apparatus is going to change them and make them part of the establishment. That isn't even up for debate anymore. If you are debating that, you're just uh, ignoring objective case studies that have been run time and time again. AOC, Jamal Bowman, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Pramila Jayapal, Jamal Bowman, Bernie Sanders, all of these other charlatan politicians. You're actively ignoring all of the, the information that we've learned from 2016 all the way to this late date in 2023. So... I had the clip. It's really bizarre that she was trying to make this comparison. I'm going to uh, play it for you all, then I'll come back and break it down. But first, you all already know what the deal is. If you can help support the show, I can do more content for you all. Um, the links to PayPal and Cash App, you want to do a one-time contribution are in the description box of this video. There's also a link to Patreon if you want to help support the show monthly. Uh, my monthly subscribers mean a lot to me. And... Um, the people who've been subscribing for a very long time. Um, and that's regular money that comes into the show. So I would greatly appreciate that if you want to sign up for my Patreon. Now I'm going to play the clip. It's about a minute or two, and then I'll come back and break it down. You know, now she has to feel some pressure about changing her foreign policy views, potentially. It's good. Um, if, so. if Mila, Mila puts here, if, if feeling like you're not going to be able to win is dispositive for you and not supporting a candidate... Look how, I'm okay, but Neil, I, right. for, for the royal you, okay, you're obviously advocating an opinion that you believe somebody has. If you don't think anybody has this opinion, then it's a little bit of a waste of time, right? So obviously you think that some people feel this way. If that's the way that some people feel, then I hate to break it to you, but that's also an argument for, that people use to not support third-party candidates and not support the Green Party, which I think is bupkis and ridiculous and really counterproductive. 
So I, I, I'm sorry, I get frustrated because I just now for years have been seeing a rotating bucket of excuses that people wield to explain inaction all over the place. And I'm not sitting here saying that, well, if you don't vote for in the Democratic Party, that means you're not doing anything at all. And, you know, you're up to no good and your time is being wasted in your use. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying when there are multiple courses of action that are not mutually exclusive to each other, and some people are excited about taking a shot at one of those options, and everybody else is trying to talk them out of it, why not just let many flowers bloom? If you want to make your whole personality don't vote in the Democratic primary, I, don't, I do not support that. If you personally don't want to vote in the Democratic primary, that's fine. But I think it would be wrong of me to be running around saying, there's no path forward except for voting in the Democratic primary. And if you're trying to recruit a Green Party candidate or third party candidate, if you're trying to organize and do mutual aid, then you're wasting everybody's time. Like it would be so messed up for me to say that. I'm so glad people are doing those things. And I similarly think it's weird for so many leftists to be making their whole personality. I don't want to participate in a primary. The general election argument, I think, is strong. Don't sheep her people into the Democratic Party. Don't tell people to vote for Democrats. I tweet every day in a very high profile way, in a way that has gotten me banned from any mainstream media job in this city, that you should not vote for Joe Biden. On vanity. Okay. Vanity. You know, <laughs> I, you couldn't have gotten more. I, you know what? I'm Thank the you. queen of saying don't vote for Joe Biden. So don't come for me over that. No, no. I'm, um, I absolutely, I didn't. Um, just want to point, point out. Yeah. Record. No, you for sure haven't. All right, folks, you heard it there from Brianna Joy Gray herself. If you are going to make it a priority for yourself to make people aware of what a giant waste of time and energy it is to get invested in uh, electoral politics, more specifically electoral politics within the Democratic Party, where in their own words... Their lawyers have come out and said, we don't, this whole democracy thing, it's, you know, an option. But at the end of the day, if we wanted to, the leaders of the Democratic Party can choose the candidate in the back room, regardless of who wins the popular vote, who wins, gets the most votes from constituents. All that doesn't matter because it's a, a, basically a private entity. That's what they've said. And that's not just what they've said. They said that in a lawsuit after they were sued for rigging a primary. And then what did they do with the very next primary election after that? Also rig the primary and influence the primary. Unfairly. So as uh, uh, people from Duo, Di Duo Distance uh, has said, has made this point, this, uh, a very great point. This is a, a YouTube channel that I found recently. Uh, expecting to elect, not only elect a politician who's actually going to fight the Democratic Party, but then having them stick to that and, and not buckle and cave to the internal pressures of the Democratic Party, it's impossible. What you're expecting people to do when you encourage them or allow them to uh, uh, put all their energy and resources into that fruitless uh, uh, endeavor with no pushback. It's like they said, like I said, the, the, the way they described it is like, you know that the casino is playing with loaded dice, yet you're going to keep going back because that's the only game in town. And not only are you going to keep going back, you're going to get all your friends to go back because you think, hey, yeah, the dice are loaded. But like it's, you said, it's the only game in town. And eventually, maybe we can win. Even though we know the entire game is fucking rigged. That makes absolutely no sense. And then, the... Just, there was just several bizarre points that I'm, like I said, surprised at somebody who has covered and, and has been and seen how the democratic machine operates is still acting as if like this naive about it. And uh, many of 
messed up an intro a little bit because she not only compared did this false equivalency to trying to create uh, another power political power center outside of the Democratic Party, outside of the duopoly with a Green Party or any other third party. Not only did she compare that to uh, uh, sheep herding people into playing into a, 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 a rigged game with loaded dice, she also made the equivalency to mutual aid and actually helping people in their community, like how RBN does and, and specific and wrote, all of them are, are uh, activists who support mutual aid. But um, Rome is known for its tour for the poor, going around city to city, giving school supplies, giving food to, to poor people, clothes to poor people, water. She's going to act like it's an a equal thing to say, hey, stop going to this casino to play this game with the loaded dice, and hey, stop giving uh, uh, donating to mutual aid and helping poor people in your community. She's trying to act like you're equally bad if you tell people to stop this this bullshit in the Democratic Party and do mutual aid. That's really a bizarre take to have. That really is. And again, it just seems like she's just missing the most glaring argument that... Um, and also so another point that she makes, I don't know if it was in this clip specifically, but she made it during this episode, and she's made it before, which is... Why not? And yes, she did. Why not let all flowers bloom, right? If this is, if you may not like it, go do something else. But the thing is, and she says, oh, well, you know, there's so many people who were inspired by the Bernie Sanders campaign that they got more in, in, involved in like policy details and um, trying to agitate change because of the Bernie Sanders campaign. And, be, and she keeps using that as if that's a reason to keep doing it, even though we know it produces absolutely no material results. Because there was some, it wasn't all completely bad. We found, uh, uh, we made some lemonade out of some lemons. Therefore, we need to keep doing the same shit to produce these fucking worthless lemons. Is basically what she's trying to say. It makes absolutely no sense. It really makes no sense. If say you were uh, uh, you're you growing up in your family home, and one day it catches fire and it burns down, and ever since that experience, you feel the drive and the inspiration to become a firefighter. That was a horrible experience. And it led to you doing something good. But are you then going to advocate to let's go around burning down people's houses so we can get some more firefighters? Is that what you're going to do? Because that's literally the uh, analogous to what you're trying to say about, oh, yeah, the game is rigged in the Democratic Party. But maybe, well, she put millions of people in there and then they'll see that it's rigged. And then some of them will, I don't know will keep continuing this 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 debate within the Democratic Party for the next election. Like what is what do you think is, is, is worth that 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 all that sunk cost? Absolutely nothing if you ask me. Um so there was a clip. I thought it was interesting. Um let me know what you guys think in the comment section because what I really want to get across is it is mutually exclusive. We do have finite resources. No matter, there's, you can't convince me that all, that the amount of people who know the information that we need to, to know in order to produce meaningful action is so limited. And then also, those, the people who know that information tend to be poor and with limited time and, and, and money resources. Therefore, we're going to do a bunch of different shit and one of the, 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 the main options that we're going to allow people to do without any pushback is a guaranteed dead end. And like I said, playing with uh, playing a rigged game with loaded dice. And another thing I wanted to push back is this convoluted strategy that she cooked up in her head that 
we're going to tell everybody how vile and repulsive and against your interest the Democratic Party is in the general election, which is true. But in the primary election, we're going to forget all of that, and we're going to talk about how all these great people are running in the Democratic Party, and it is worth your time and energy. Oh, boy, let me tell you, you should get in on this. You should get behind one of these candidates because they're so great within this Democratic Party. Oh, I, somebody who follows politics and does this regularly, I have a host a show. I hear what you're saying. I'm be able to articulate the distinction that you're trying to make with a uh, messaging between the primary and the general election. But why are you making this black and white issue about what the Democratic Party is, which is a hundred percent a tool to advance corporate power and be used against their own constituents? Why are you trying to make this black and white issue so confusing to regular people who do not follow this as closely? If the Democratic Party is working against their interests, let that be clear. Stop confusing people and say they're working against your interest in the general election and don't vote for them. But you should definitely be involved in the whole Democratic Party process in the primary. Because it doesn't hold the same way. You can't tell people that they're an existential threat and they're risking nuclear war. But then again, um, let's see, let's pick which one of their politicians are our favorite in the Democratic Party. Some of them also, m most of them also support uh, the, the disastrous policies in Ukraine. So it, it just makes it unnecessarily confusing. And you think that you're playing 40, four dimensional chess, but you're really not. You're just, it looks like you're talking out of both sides of your mouth and saying the Democratic Party is so hostile and so toxic, but at the same time, and also so undemocratic, but at the same time, let's get involved in their, and, and in their sham process that we know the game is rigged, the dice are loaded, but let's do it anyway. Let's be clear with people about what it is, and maybe they can actually understand, but all this mixed messaging is not helping, I promise you that. So let me know what you guys think about the, this clip in the comment section. Um, again, if you can support the show, all the links are in the description box. And I do have more content coming for you. Also, by the way, I posted a video about the CIA connection with Jeffrey Epstein and how he met with the CIA director. YouTube deleted it and gave me a, a strike, which is why I wasn't able to post any content for a week. I'm working on getting that clip on to Rumble and Rockfin. So I'll give you an update.